Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the I Worship service of Eastminster United Church in Belleville. We like to call this, this service has 32 minutes or thereabouts. It's Sunday, the 6th of September. It's the Labor Day weekend here in Canada, and I trust that you are having a good long weekend. I've been back in the office uh, and working this past week, and uh, had a little break at the end of the summer, and uh, would like to thank Reverend Frank Hamper and our music team for uh, helping us out over the past couple of Sundays and leading our worship services. Well, I have two announcements for you before we begin our worship today, and the first is to let you know that the management team met this week and uh, has decided to push uh, the physical reopening of our services back a couple of weeks. Um, you'll know that on long weekends, uh, some people get up to mischief, and then of course there's the children going back to school, and they just thought that it would be wise to uh, pause a little longer and uh, see what the COVID fallout is from these events before opening. So we're currently planning to open on September 27th, and I'll write up something in the pastor's pen about that. It'll be available uh, in the middle of next week uh, uh, on our website and on our Facebook account. Secondly, this morning, as you uh, would have seen by the, the broad uh, uh, video just a moment ago, that uh, we are having a, a service of Holy Communion today. And these are not normal times, of course, and it's impossible for us to meet together and have the pastor bless the uh, elements uh, uh, in, as the, the person is present. Uh, but uh, during this time of pandemic, we are trusting that the Holy Spirit will be with all of us wherever we are and uh, will bless our elements that we individually prepare and set before us uh, during this time of worship. And so if you uh, haven't already got some of the elements for communion uh, uh, ready and before you at this point, you may want to pause the video for just a moment and uh, then pick up uh, some bread and a glass of grape juice or wine, uh, even water if you haven't got these. We're of course thinking that these are desperate times requiring desperate measures. And uh, the key here is that each of us would commune with God. And now, let us worship God and let us pray. God of grace and glory, your creative power is beyond imagining. Your love is wider than the whole universe. Your mercy, greater than the heights of the heavens. Your wisdom, deeper than the deepest seas. 
maker of all things, we give thanks that you became one of us in Jesus Christ, and that through your Spirit you continue to be present with us in every place and every time, and even now as we meet apart but together in the name of Jesus. We come seeking and we come to worship. And may the thoughts and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Well, let's hear from our worship team, George and Jean and Bruce, as they sing the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. Our scripture reading today is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, and reading verses 9 through 21. Let us hear the word of God. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. 
Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, September 1st marked the 40th anniversary this year of the end of Terry Fox's Marathon of Hope. Terry Fox was only 18 years old when he incurred uh, bone cancer and he had to have his right leg amputated 15 centimeters above the knee. Now, while he was in hospital, Terry was overcome by the suffering of cancer patients, particularly the young children he encountered, and he determined that he had to do something about it, and he pondered for a while, and then he came up with this idea that he would run from coast to coast, from St. John's to Victoria, across the nation of Canada. Well, when he began his, uh, his run, the name Terry Fox was not recognized that much throughout the country, but soon people began to learn of him. Little by little, his commitment and effort. Uh, people would see pictures of this young man running with a prosthetic leg. It became front page news. Uh, he may have been disabled, but he was running the length of a marathon almost every day. And uh, by the time he reached Toronto, there were thousands who were there to greet him and support him and wish him well on his way. And uh, soon Terry uh, went through the rest of southern Ontario and then turned north. Sadly, after 143 days and 3,339 miles, he was forced to stop just outside of Thunder Bay. He'd started coughing. He began to have difficulty breathing. And the doctors found that his cancer was back, this time in his lungs. And the entire nation was stunned, and some of you may remember the... Uh, newscast of him as he was leaving his run. He was in one of those gurneys that uh, uh, goes on to an ambulance and a television crew interviewed him and he's holding back tears as he uh, just was thinking about what he had done and he's thinking about the treatment he's facing uh, but affirming at the same time that if it was at all possible he was going to get back and finish this task that he had set himself in support of others. Well, sadly, that didn't happen, and the following year, Terry Fox passed away at the age of 22. Now, it's been 40 years since the end of the Marathon of Hope, but many people are still drawn to the story of Terry Fox and uh, the love and the care and the thoughts for others that led him to do what he did, something extraordinary, something gracious. This uh, heroic young Canadian may be gone, but uh, his legacy continues with the Terry Fox run, and over $750 million has been raised in his name. Who knows how many people have been helped by those funds and the research that has been possible with them. Let me change gears for just a moment 
and uh, get you into the scripture. Uh, getting back to the epistle to the Romans, the Apostle Paul has been speaking of the grace of God chapter after chapter. He tells us about grace being free, that grace is unmerited, that grace offers hope. There are some great statements about grace in Romans. While we were yet sinners, says the Apostle, Christ died for us. And we're now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But as much as Paul has been speaking about grace in Romans, he moves on in the latter chapters to speak about a Christian response to grace. He appeals to Christians. By the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And Paul goes on to speak then about Christian conduct and uh, what a life transformed and what a renewed mind should look like. And it's as though the experience of, of seeing cancer that Terry Fox had, the experience of seeing the suffering of others transformed him and led him to do things to help others. The understanding of the extent of God's grace and God's work in Christ should send the Christian out into the world to act differently. And that's what our reading today was about. The Christian is supposed to be transformed. Transformed, in a word, by love. Let your love be genuine, says Paul. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Do not lag in zeal. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Wow. Bless and do not curse them. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be haughty. Associate with the lowly. Do not repay evil for evil. And he goes on. I love the words of the United Methodist preacher and bishop, William Willimon. He writes, For 11 chapters of this epistle, Paul has used every means at his disposal. Argument, narrative, hymn, poem, reason, humor, to tell the Romans, in Jesus Christ, you are royalty. Everything God's got, God has put into you. You are, uh, listen to these words, the first wave of a grand Jesus-provoked revolution. You are God's showcase and then at the beginning of chapter 12 comes this little Greek word, un, which means therefore, or so. So, don't be conformed to this world because you are citizens of a new world. So, serve the Lord because you've been served by the Lord. So, practice hospitality because God has been hospitable in welcoming you, a stranger, a sinner. So, bless those who persecute you because Jesus blessed you even when you crucified him. Paul is doing ethics, giving prescriptions for human behavior, but perhaps not ethics like we usually do ethics. Here is an ethic based not on do's and don'ts, the shrill, carping advice of the ethically presumptuous. Here's an ethic based on who Jesus Christ says we really are, says Willimon, and who we are meant to be. Love is the Christian state of being. I came across a lovely poem the other day, Kindness by Naomi Shihab Nye. And the poem was read by my favorite actress, Emma Thompson. And Thompson introduces the reading by saying she was asked to do this reading 
online and to dedicate it to a friend. And she said this in introduction. She said, I will dedicate this to our collective future, to the people that we are going to be after this. Because what the crisis has made so painfully clear is that we can't go back to normal. We have to replace some of our priorities with others. We have to place people before profit. We have to place cooperation before competition. And above all, we have to access what has been so abundant in these times, which is kindness. And we have to apply it to all of our systems. And the first question we have to ask ourselves when we address anything is, but is it kind? And then Emma Thompson goes on to read the poem, Kindness. Well, a few years ago, I gave a sermon on love and I uh, defined love. I help people understand it, but I defined it with this word uh, fairness and being fair with one another. And I remember after the message, one of the people who heard it, Terry, came up to me and he said, do you think it's just fairness? And is it maybe kindness as well? I think that Terry's on to something. And I think Emma Thomas, Thompson is on to something with her exhortation to kindness in all of our systems. And I think Terry Fox is on to something and says something about how we should think and help others uh, when we see suffering uh, and, and actually do something about it. And all of these things fit into this picture of loving one another that Paul tries to get across to us. Love is to be the Christian modus operandi. It's supposed to be our, our very being in Christ. And we all have to ask ourselves how that is going to work out in our lives. I maybe could just end the message there, but I uh, want to say something on a very practical level because I'm happy to let you know that with the affirming of opening our worship services at the end of the month, the uh, management committee has also affirmed the opening of the reopening of the Open Door Cafe, uh, a ministry that has provided meals to seniors and to people who are struggling to make ends meet. It's a ministry that had been going for 24 years before COVID. And uh, it's going to resume with uh, takeout lunches this time and meals. Um, among other things, the Open Door Cafe has been a great act of kindness and love on the part of Eastminster and our volunteers from other churches uh, to th this community. It's a great way to follow with Paul's exhortation to contribute to the needs of the saints, to extend hospitality to strangers. It's part of loving others. How is love going to work out in your life? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we are filled with gratitude for the gift that you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. You made us in your image, but uh, all of us have gone astray. All of us struggle with some wrongdoing. None is worthy. But by your grace and your love in Christ, you first loved us. And by Christ, you change us, you renew us, you transform us. Help us, O oh Lord, to present ourselves as living sacrifices. And help us to be vessels of love, to do things that can change, change the world. We pray for your people throughout the world, the church. In these times when the church is facing so many new challenges, help our ways, first of all, to be motivated by, by love and kindness and fairness 
a love for you, a love for others. Lord, may love be our way in the world that others would give glory to you. And then as we think of this weekend, we also remember labor and give thanks for the labor movement. While maybe it hasn't been as prominent as it once was, it's calling may be greater now than it has been in some years. Help it as it works to give individuals a living wage, to uh, help protect workers, to uh, work against the use of children in production. And may those who support others in this way sense your blessing. And perhaps more than anything else on this Labor Day, we lift up to you and give thanks for those who have been continuing to work in the various kinds of front lines throughout this pandemic, whether it's in the healthcare area, whether it's those who have helped to keep supply lines open or those who have uh, kept our grocery shelves full. Lord, bless them all and be with us all as we try to live in love in this world. Amen. Well, at the end of what is the traditional end of summer in our culture, Labor Day weekend, we gather together in the Spirit to share the meal that Jesus gave uh, his followers. And in so doing, uh, we trust that we will commune with God and God with us. As we begin, let us take a moment quietly to confess our sins. St. Paul declared that the night is far gone, the day is near. So let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Know that in Jesus' work and by the grace of God, you are forgiven. And be at peace with God, with yourself, and with each other. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed is our gracious God, creator of all, who has loved us and given us a great hope through his beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the progression of the seasons and the warmth that we have had throughout the summer. For many, summer is a time of holidays, and we give thanks for times of rest, as well as for the beauty and productivity and sustenance that God's creation provides. Remember the words of the hymn, Praise to the Lord, who let all that is in me adore him. All that has life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from God's people again. Gladly, gladly, for I, we adore you. Well, before we move back to the regularity of work and school, we take time to remember that on the night of Jesus' betrayal, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. This is my blood of the new covenant, he said. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Well, as Jesus did for his disciples, so now we set out our tables in our homes for ourselves and our family members. We're in the midst of a pandemic and pray, Lord God, send down your Holy Spirit upon us wherever we are. And upon these elements of bread and wine, that the bread which we break and the cups that we bless would lead us into remembrance and a full communion with you in Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless these elements and keep us unto eternal life, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us sup together. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Gracious God, we have filled our cups to overflowing. We feasted on the bread of life. Help us now to be living reminders of your good news in this world. As we go back to our work, our schools, our everyday lives, may we carry into our own situations the love and the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'll leave you now with some words of benediction, and that will be followed by another song from our music team, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Let us hear the words of benediction. Let us not grow weary in seeking Christ. Build up the faith that is in you. Pray without ceasing. Live out the love of God in the world. And look forward to the mercies of God that lead to eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
his Savior still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for sin? Oh, oh, oh. 